Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we will discuss initial recognition part part four. So the focus of this video is the purchase of property plan and equipment by way of non-cash acquisition. Okay, another way to acquire an asset is by way of non-cash acquisition. So sa non-cash acquisition, pwede po natin siyang acquire by issuing a equity instrument which is governed by IFRS 2 share-based payment. So, and also, it can also be acquired through donation. So, it governed naman po ito ay IAS 20 or International Accounting Standard 20 a specific government grant. So, let's first discuss the issuance of equity shares IFRS 2. Under non-cash acquisition, by way of issuing a equity instrument, so these are the considerations. So, tatandaan po natin. So, to get the initial recognition of property, plan, and equipment, so, ang first option natin is to get the fair market value of the asset received. So, dapat po available yung fair market of value of the asset received or kaya naman yung kanyang cash price equivalent. So, in case hindi available yung cash price equivalent or the fair market value of the asset received, saka lang natin pwedeng gamitin yung fair market value of the shares issued. Let's have an example. So, for example, man company purchased a piece of land by issuing their own ordinary shares of 10,000 shares with 100 par value and the market price is 150. The land has a cash price of 1.3 million pesos. So, requirements. Number one, what will be the journal entry at the date of acquisition? So, as I mentioned earlier, since the fair market value of the land was determined or was avail is, is available, so, ang gagamitin po natin is yung fair market value ng land. So, to record the acquisition, so, we just need to debit land, 1.3 million, which is the cash price, the fair market value at the time of purchase, then record ordinary share at far value, so, 100 times 10,000 shares, so, makukuha po natin yung 1 million pesos, then record the remaining amount to share premium, dash ordinary, the amounting to 300,000. So, for example, the fair market of the fair market value of land is not available. So, to record that, simply use the fair market value of the shares issued. Since 150 ang ating fair market value, so that would be the value of the land. So, just debit land, 1.5 million. So, 150 times 10,000. Then, credit ordinary shares, same computation. 10,000 times 100, which is the far value. Then, the remaining amount will go to the share premium ordinary, which is 500,000 pesos. Property plan and equipment can also be acquired through donation. So, meaning, the donor will give property plan and equipment to the donee. Sa case natin, so tayo dito yung donee kasi tayo yung bibigyan ng property plan and equipment. If that's the case, first, kailangan natin i-determine sino ba yung magbibigay ng property plan and equipment. Kasi ang mag, ang, kung ang magbibigay ng property plan and equipment ay si shareholder itself, so we don't recognize any income nor a liability account. So, diretso po yan sa ating capital account using the account title donated capital. So, for example, ang donate is land. So, we just debit land and credit donated capital. However, if the donor is the government itself, so we have to follow kung ano yung nakalagay sa IS-20 sa government grant. According dun sa IS-20 government grant, kailangan nating identify what is the donation. So, ano po ba siya? Related sa, sa income or related sa asset? If we say related sa income, uh, may condition si government before niya ibigay. So, for example, we will give you cash. However, kailangan mong gamitin niya yung cash na yan. For example, for environmental purposes and the like. Pag sinabi naman natin related to asset naman, the government will give an asset, for example, cash or land. Then, the government will give a restriction or a condition wherein the donee is required to buy an asset or kaya naman to construct an asset on their own. If that's the case, uh, donation siya from government under IES 20 using uh, related assets. So, for this video, magkupokus tayo dun sa related asset kasi ang topic natin ay property, plant and equipment. So, let's start. Let's have an example. For example, donation tayo. An entity received a grant of 50 million pesos cash for the acquisition of chemical facility 
with an estimated cost of 80 million pesos and a useful life down ng 5 years. So these are the requirements. So number one, journal entry at the date of grant if the donor is a shareholder. And number two, journal entry if the donor is the government. So since number one, ang donor natin dyan ay si shareholder, di natin kailangan mag-present or mag-recognize ng liability or ng income account. So dahil owner yung nagbigay, ang ating proper entry ay debit cash, 50 million pesos. Then credit donated capital, ang amount is 50 million pesos. So hindi na i-ignore po natin yung condition kasi nga nandoon naman siya nakapunta sa ating shareholders equity. So kahilera ng ating mga share premium. So therefore, the recording of the construction or purchase ng chemical facility as is lang. So debit tayo ng building, 80 million. Then credit tayo ng cash, 80 million. Okay, let's assume that the donor is the government. So sabi dyan, pag ang donor na daw natin ay si government, we have to follow IES 20, which is government grants. So if that's the case, since this is related to asset, so ang proper entry natin at the date of grant is, of course, we don't need to record that under a share capital account. So gagamit po tayo ng liability account. So basically, we just debit cash, which is 50 million, the amount of grant, then credit an earned government grant, which is a liability account na 50 million. So eventually, that 50 million will be recorded over time under income, depende doon sa ating pag ng ating related asset. So based on sa condition, kailangan daw bumili ng chemical facility, so worth 80 million, so record lang natin. So debit tayo ng building, 80 million, then credit cash, 80 million. So at December 31, since the building will be depreciated, so basically we just debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. So yung building natin is 80 million divided by 5. So we have the record depreciation expense, 16 million, then credit accumulated depreciation building, 16 million. Then sa pag-record naman po ng recognition ng government grant income, we just debit and earn government grant income worth 10 million pesos. So, para ma-compute yung 10 million, same lang din ng manner ng depreciation natin ng building kasi ito ay government grant related to asset. So, 50 million divided by 5, so makuha po natin yung 10 million. So, same case din yung credit natin which is the government grant income which is 10 million. So, debit and earned government grant then credit government grant income. So, at the end of its fifth year, so, makikita nyo dyan, the unearned government income will be zeroed out kasi nga, na-recognize na po natin siya over time every year ng 10 million.